All right, today we'll be learning how to calculate payback period, which is an investment appraisal method that we use in IB business. Okay, um, you should see on the, the DP business management website the question on the right hand side, but just in case you don't see that, here is the, uh, all the information we need to calculate it. So it says, Company X is planning to undertake a project requiring an initial investment of $50 million. It's expected to generate $15 million in year one, $20 million in year two, $25 million in year three, and $50 million in year four. Calculate the payback period for the project. Okay, so first thing we do is make a table. Now remember, payback period is just telling us when do we pay back that initial investment. When do we have enough money and profits to pay it back? Okay, so making the table, we automatically know that we'll have three separate columns. So I'll make my columns right now. That's year, cash inflow, and cumulative cash flow. But the next question is how many rows do we make? And since we have four years of cash inflows, we're going to make six different rows. One for our title, one for year zero, which is when you have your initial investment, and then four more for each cash inflow. So that's four. Oh, they're getting bigger and bigger every year. Five and six. Okay, so we have year right here. We have cash flow. So this is the cash inflow that's coming in every year. And then we have cumulative. Oh, can I fit it? Don't think so. Too bad. Okay. All right. So let's put our years in first. So year zero, one, two, three, four. Remember, the year zero is just representing your initial investment, which here was negative 50 million. So to show that, we put it in parentheses. Okay, now let's go to all of our other cash inflows. So we had a 15, 20, 25, and a whopping 50. Okay, and these are supposed to be in millions. You probably, you really should um, show up above maybe in this, uh, this first uh, row here under cash flow that this is in millions. I just don't have room to do that. Next, we need to do the cumulative cash flow, and that's just adding up the total. So negative 50 in year zero, we have no other cash inflows, so we are negative 50 for this also. Okay, now to figure out the next cumulative cash flow, we need to take our negative 50 plus our positive 15, and together we get a negative 35. So that's how we get our cumulative here. And we do the same thing again. So the 35, negative 35 plus 20 gives us negative 15. Now negative 15 plus 25, all right, we are in positive territory. We are at 10. We have now paid back our initial investment. I don't even have to look at year four. It's 60, which is pretty obvious. But according to payback period, we do not care about year four. All we care about is when we pay it back. So we now know that we paid it back somewhere in between, oops, somewhere in between here, which tells us it took us two whole years plus some months. Okay, so between our negative and our positive number, two whole years plus some months. So now we need to figure out exactly how many years and how many months did it take us to do it. So years is easy. It was two years. Now for months. The way you calculate months is pretty simple if you've made the table. So what you do is you take this negative 15 and you make that your numerator and divide that by 25. Okay? So just 15 over 25. Because you're trying to figure out in year three, so those months that start going into year three, how long does it take you to you actually pay it back? We only had 15 million left, but we get 25 for the year. So that 15 over 25 will tell us the months. So to do that, and we have already, we say it's two years. We already know that. So now we say two years and 
15 over 25 months. But we also, we don't have a decimal for this. We should have the actual months. So we'll multiply this by 12. So that will equal 7.2. So to me, what I would put for an answer is 2 years and 8 months. Because you did not pay it back until that 8th month. At 7.2, sure, you had, but I want the whole number. So two years, two whole years, and eight months, your initial investment has been paid back. Now, looking at payback period, we see it's a really simple way to find out, uh, first of all, when do we pay back our investment? Um, do we pay back our investment? So, for example, if this went into year five and we hadn't paid it back yet, and we don't have any cash inflows for year five, then we never pay it back. We definitely wouldn't invest in this project. So it's a nice, simple way to look at an investment, compare with other investment options, and find out, do we break even? Um, also remember, for companies, the biggest reason why companies go bankrupt or go under is because of cash flow problems, not profitability problems. So for this, cash flow means getting that cash in on time, and quickly and this will tell us this is time focus this is all about getting that cash in on time um, now when we look back at this so we see here our biggest cash inflow was actually year four and that was with this 50 million right here which we don't even take into consideration because we've already paid it back and this shows one negative about the uh, payback period method. We don't look anything beyond the actual payback period. All we care about is time. We're not actually looking at profitability. Do we make more money on this project than another project? We don't know. All we care about is do we pay it back quicker than the other project? Um, and you have to remember, the goal of the firm is to maximize wealth for the shareholder. This wealth really comes in in year four for this shareholder. But we don't look, in, look into that with payback period. Okay, that's it. I hope you understand payback period now.